This is a uh, introduction to both the uh, background of the letter of James as well as um, the introduction to themes about Jesus that one can find in James. Uh, James is supposedly written by James, the brother of Jesus, um, who had become an influential leader in the Jerusalem church. There's not a Paul James, which actually comes the Greek form for Jacob. Uh, it was a fairly popular enough name in the ancient world. There's not a lot of James to choose from um, uh, within the early Christian community to understand who this may uh, be. But uh, since uh, one of the apostles uh, named James uh, was executed um, very early on, that kind of discounts him. There was another James who was also an apostle, but he was a pretty minor figure. Not many people believe that he's responsible for this letter. So that leaves uh, James, the uh, brother of Jesus, as uh, the, probably the, the best candidate to consider uh, this as the author. Uh, this may or may not have been written while James was actually alive. Uh, it certainly is possible that the nature of this letter is a compilation of things that James taught. The book of James looks like um, a wisdom material, Christian wisdom material. And as such, a lot of wisdom material are, are compilations of independent sayings uh, or groups of sayings. So think, for instance, of the book of Proverbs. Proverbs is a collection of different sayings by different people, different times, different locations. Well, these may have been teachings um, of James, and they have been compiled, and they could have been sent either while James was still alive, or uh, even after James had died. And those who admired James, those who respected James, those who looked to James's leadership, and this is kind of maybe a kind of a somewhat testimonial, uh, a way of honoring James. Now, if it was written while James was still alive, then the book of James could very well be our earliest New Testament book. And if you want to think kind of chronologically of books, this, this book may even predate Paul's writings. So uh, that certainly is a possibility. Uh, others think that James may be written kind of at the same time that Paul is writing, or if it was written after James has died, then we're talking, um, you know, something that could be well have written to the past AD 70. So we don't really know the date uh, when it was written, um, but um, we certainly have a good idea about who it is honoring. And it is written to uh, a group that is known as the 12 tribes scattered, or uh, those Jewish Christians in the diaspora. Now that word diaspora, uh, or we could use, sometimes translators might use the word, the dispersion. And uh, this is referring to uh, Jewish Christians that live outside of Palestine. Now we don't know why they have been scattered. Um, it could be that these are Jewish Christians who uh, have been scattered uh, because of some kind of persecution in Jerusalem. We know that there was a persecution of uh, Hellenistic Jewish Christians and they left Jerusalem and since the book of James is written in Greek uh, it could be this is James writing to those who maybe at one time had lived in Jerusalem but because of, of uh, the persecution they went to different places and he's reaching out to them with you know teachings of wisdom uh, encouragements exhortations towards ethical life but um, it also could be that these are just Jews who live outside of Palestine who have become Christians and that they were not scattered because of any particular uh, persecution. So uh, the reference is just to the fact that the word 12 tribes seems to indicate we're talking about Jews um, and the idea of being scattered is referencing this idea of being in the diaspora, being outside of Palestine. So besides that, we don't know an awful lot about the, the author or the occasion or the time. Um, the book of James really just doesn't give us a lot of information, clues to its historical date. 
And now to talk about uh, the um, story about Jesus in James. Martin Luther is uh, quite well known to have described James as a strawy letter. And by that he meant there's not really anything in James that kind of attests to the Christian story about Jesus. Um, the only thing we really have is um, the Lord Jesus Christ is the Lord of glory. So we're familiar with this phrase, Lord Jesus Christ, a phrase that uh, Paul is well known for using. And we have also this idea of him being the Lord of glory, and that too is uh, found in Paul's writings and so First Corinthians. So at least James and Paul share the same kind of designation of Jesus as Lord and as Christ. We also have the expression of the use of the word Lord by itself in the rest of James, and I've listed there several places where the word Lord uh, appears. But what's not clear is whether or not Jesus, James means by Lord God or whether he means Jesus. So if he means Jesus, then James could believe in the return of Jesus since he talks about the return of the Lord. And uh, I guess return seems to suggest someone who has once been and now who has left. So um, Jesus, is the, Jesus is the one who is returning, is the Lord who is returning. And he will be, at the judge, he will be the judge who's standing at the door. In other words, it has this kind of tone of judgment is coming. So the book of James may see Jesus' uh, role as a judge. And it could be as well that Jesus is the Lord who is the one lawgiver and judge. Now, although, you know, when we think about lawgiver, we tend to think about God being the, the lawgiver and God being the judge. And so there, Lord could simply be, uh, be God. And so it's, uh, it's a little quite unclear. And since these may be a collection of sayings, Lord may in some places just be be a reference to God and in other places be a reference to Jesus. And so it uh, makes it uh, complicated to uh, divide it, to divide it out clearly. Uh, also, it could be that Jesus is healing the sick as Lord through the ministry of the church. And so praying in the name of the Lord uh, for healing of the sick. And so that could indicate something of the Jesus is not just a end of time figure but that there is a sense of his presence already and that he is working still uh, right now. But it is curious that James says nothing about Jesus' death or its benefits. There's nothing about justification by faith, um, no call for faith in the resurrection, no, nothing about faith in what Jesus' uh, death on the cross uh, accomplished. Uh, the, the book really just focuses on practical um, uh, life issues, uh, uh, manifestations of wisdom and uh, that probably is why James is oftentimes seen as having a very low Christology. It just doesn't really provide us very much in indicating what early Christian communities believed or may have believed or were taught about about Jesus. And so that's a, a little introduction then to the background and major themes uh, about Jesus in the letter of James.